Hello everyone, welcome to module 4. Module 4 will cover all the topics related to process management. So in this first video, we are going to talk about the process basics, controlling processes and how to terminate processes. So let us first begin by understanding what is a process. So if you have done programming any time in your life, a program is what it's a set of instructions so you write a few lines of codes that we call is a program and when we run that code that becomes a process i'll give you a very basic example you install any software let us suppose ms word so that word that icon that you see is nothing but a compiled code so it's still a code so that icon itself is a program because it is not running the moment you double click it you start running it it becomes a process so the output that you see on the screen the layout of the ms word that is coming from the process which has started when you have double clicked the program so when you double click or execute a program by giving a command it becomes a process now every process in the system is uniquely identified by something called a process id so two process might have a same name but they will always have a different process id and every process is monitored or managed by a parent process id so the parent id of a process is referred to as ppid parent process id now a process can be in four different states it can be in the running state means it is executing it can be in the sleep state sleep state means that you have temporarily suspended the process for a few seconds so for that number of seconds it is not going to get the cpu or it can be in the stopped state stop state means it will not get the cpu until it is resumed back so there is a slight difference in sleeping the time period is fixed for which is not going to get the cpu but in stopped it will not get the cpu until explicitly invoked back again and the last state is the zombie state or the terminated state so the process will be in one of these states now how to get the information about all the processes that are there in the system so we will use the ps command for this you can use the ps command without any options or you may use certain options like aux or lax so i'll show you the output of these commands and how to interpret that output let us simply run the ps command so it lists a couple of processes and it tells you what is the PID of the process. So this is very important. So 2401, 2773. And it tells the terminal on which the process is running, the runtime and the command or the process itself. So it's only lists two processes, the foreground processes. In order to get more detail, you can use AUX. If you simply use this, there's a very long list of the processes that are running in the system. So just to shorten this output, what we can do is use the head command, pipe it with head. And you can see here the first 10 entries of the output. So what I'm able to see here is the user who has run the command, the process ID, the amount of CPU being used, this amount of memory being used, virtual memory being used, and here it is the status also. So what is the current status, whether it is in the sleep status or it is in the running status, when it was started, total running time and the command or the process itself. So you get a little more detail about the process. Similarly, if I run the LAX option, Thing went wrong sorry ps not ls so here you get a little different output so you get the uid in this case the parent id and the parent process id also so just in case you want to know who is the parent or what is the parent process id of any process then you can use the lax combination moreover it also tells you about the priority of the process so this we will talk in the later lectures and what are the nice levels so this gives you a different kind of an information about the process now you can divide all the processes in the system into two categories foreground processes and background processes foreground processes are those with which you can interact 
and background processes are those which run in the background a simple example is uh, the processes like ms word or any browser that you interact with in real time are foreground processes and processes like the antivirus or you download something they run in the background they don't interrupt what you are interacting with so they are called background processes in a graphical user interface for example in windows you have the option for task manager in which you can see all the information related to a process which processes are running which are in the foreground which are in the background what kind of uh, memory they are using how much cpu we are using everything you can get this in the graphical interface so the similar information i have told you that you can use the ps command to get all the information related to a process now how to shift between foreground and background processes so here is a kind of a summary that you can use to shift between foreground and background processes this is the list of all the commands that you can use so i will show you the use of all these with example whenever you run a process it will always run in the foreground okay so let's suppose i start a process sleep now what sleep does is it makes the current process go to sleep for n number of seconds so let's suppose here i specify 10 so this means this particular process will sleep for 10 seconds now the moment i press enter so you see now this is in the foreground so if i type something else i'm not able to get any output why because the current foreground process is sleep so you see once those 10 seconds are over the sleep process is over then only the next of the commands ps or ls are executed now what you want is while this process was running let's suppose now it is 20 you still want to keep interacting with the system so what i can do is i can run the sleep process in the background how to do it so this is possible with any process not only with sleep but with any process use the ampersand sign so this is symbol along with the seven key use this symbol now if you press enter you see that it gives you a number 2827 so this is the process id so it tells you that this particular process is now in the background how to know use ps so in the output you can see here this is an entry for sleep okay so 2827 how it is in the background because i am able to run the ps command in real time or any other command in real time so this means that the sleep process is running in the background one more command you can use jobs so i think the sleep command is over yes so i saw this output so done this means the sleep process is over so let me restart it in the background and if i use the jobs command so the jobs command will tell you all the processes which are running in the background so it tells you that it is running which process sleep 20 okay so you can start n number of processes in the background and get the list with the help of the jobs command now what if i want to bring this process from the background back into the foreground for that this initial number one this is a job number not the process id but the job number of the process is running in the background we need to make use of this particular number okay so now the sleep process is over 20 seconds are over so let us restart this let me give a higher number so that we get enough time to do all the uh, jumps from the foreground to the background and vice versa so jobs right we have one process in the background now if i want to make it come in the foreground i need to use fg space percentage symbol and the job number so the job number is one from where i get this this very first entry here and now you see that it is in the foreground how do i identify the cursor is blinking in the foreground i am not able to type in any command it's not get, giving me any kind of an output now it is in the foreground how to push it back into the background use control z and you can see the command prompt okay and you are able to execute any command the process sleep process from the foreground has been pushed back into the background one important thing to notice when i push a foreground process into the background is stopped you see here stopped so the process has been stopped 
it's not running now it has been stopped short means it will not be running until i resume it how to check this or verify this if you use the ps aux remember in this output we were able to see the status now i'm going to pipe it with the grep command and look for the entries for sleep so what i'm doing is i'm listing the processes piping into the grep command if you remember grep used to search so what i'm going to search for the sleep so i'm going to get all the processes list of all the processes named sleep so i started sleep 40 so this is the entry you can verify with the process id also 2850 and here 2850 so this is what i'm looking for you see here the status is t and if you remember that chart that i showed you t stands for stopped processes the status symbol t means the process is stopped so once you push a process from the background into the back into the sorry from the foreground into the background it is stopped by default so how to resume it you need to use the bg command background percentage symbol and then the number of the job so it is again one and now you can see here the process is started you check the status once again now it is not a t it is s sleeping so that was the process sleep process so all this has been summarized here on this ppt you can uh, do all these steps one by one little bit of practice and you will be able to understand what is happening the next thing is how to kill a process so while a process is running at times you want to forcefully kill it Control C key can also be used to kill a running process, but there's a different command or other a set of commands which are available. So like kill, kill all, and p kill. These are the three commands that you can use to kill a specific process or a set of processes. The difference is the kind of options that they provide. With p kill or and with kill all, you can specify certain patterns. All the processes which match those patterns will be killed at once. Okay, so let me show you with the example. So, PS, let's start a process. So, I'm going to start three processes in the background so that I can do the uh, use the kill commands in the foreground. So, 50, 60, and 70. If I list, so you can see there are three processes. If I use kill, I need to specify the PID. So let's scale it 2901. PS, you see there that is terminated. Now kill all sleep. So this will kill all the processes where the name is sleep. So 2 has been killed. PS, you can see there is no entry now for sleep. So you can use any one of the commands kill kill or, or p kill depending upon what kind of uh, a target you are going to specify okay i hope that the basics of process are clear in the next video we are going to talk about how to monitor the processes